Good morning. Glad to be back with you again. I think last week I told you about the demise of old Betsy. Well, Miss Maud, Hawk's wife, calls me one day and she said, John, do you know where we could find any Brittany Spaniel pups? Honk has decided that that's what he wants, is a Brittany Spaniel. He has sold around her. It's been such a pleasant couple of days to be totally without a dog, but he's going to have to have one. And do you know where we could get Brittany Spaniel pups? I said, well, do you want more than one? No, no one. one. I said, well, I happen to know a man in Smith County that I went to school with many years ago down there. And he, if he still does, raises Brittany Spaniels. He has some very good dogs, I'm told. I've never seen his dogs, but I, I can get in touch with him. We'll see. If he doesn't have one, maybe he knows somebody who does. So I called my friend Donnie and hadn't talked to him in a good while. I tell him, I said, we're a, a friend of mine has just lost a really good bird dog. And he's wanting to start all over, start afresh. And he's wanting a Brittany Spaniel. Do you have any? He said, you couldn't have called on a better day. He said, I have a litter of seven. A man is coming next Tuesday. He's committed to take all that I have. But if you want to come before Tuesday and pick out one or two of them, It'll be all right. So I very cautiously ask the price and find out what it is. And so I go to, to Miss Maud and tell her that I found the price, but we need to go before Tuesday. That'll work out good. Honk is, Honk is on the board of a couple of companies, kind of, or companies or services or whatever. And he's going to be tied up on Monday with board meeting. You and I will go get the pup and bring it home. That'll work out really good, she said. So I tell her the price. She said, well, I'll take the deed to the house and titles to both vehicles. Maybe that'll be enough. <clears throat> and she was exaggerating a little bit, but not much. Brittany Spaniels are expensive. So we drive down to Smith County on Monday and Sure enough, he does have some very pretty pups. They're about eight weeks old, and they are pretty as a picture. There's one in the bunch that is very mischievous. He's either pulling another one's ear or pulling its tail or pulling its leg or wallering on it or something. My old says, that's the one I want right there. And Donnie laughs and says, how much do you know about picking out dogs, man? She said, very little. I just like the looks of that one. I like it. And he said, the best dog in the litter will always be the one that aggravates all the others. That'll come out that way nearly every time. So she pays Donnie. We put the dog in the car. We head on back up the road. We get home there to their house and have just gotten out. Honk pulls in the driveway. He's through with a long day there. And Ma doesn't say anything to him. She just sets the pup out on the ground there. It runs over to him and unties one of his shoes before he can <laughs> much more than look at it. Tears comes in his eyes. You can't, you just can't believe how he, he's just smiling all over. He's so happy. And he reaches down to pick him up, only the dog has run behind him now. And he turns around to pick him up, and it's run behind him again. He finally goes over and sits down in the swing, and the pup comes to him then, unties his other shoe, and then he picks him up. I don't think I've ever seen Honk as happy as he was. He said, where did you find this pup? And Maud tells him, if John knew a guy in Smith County that raises them, we've been down there and picked that one out. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. I've dreamed about him. This is exactly like he looked in my dreams. He is thrilled to death. Well, 
I leave them and go on home. A few days later, he says, uh, John, I'm studying about my new dog. And I want him trained properly. You and I could probably train him some, but I'd like for him to be trained properly. Well, Hawk and Maud, I know them well. Money's no problem to them. You know, I know a guy that, that trains bird dogs. He's very expensive, very, very expensive. But I know that this won't be a problem to him. So I tell Hawk about him. I said, let's, let's go talk to him. So we go and talk to him, and the man says, yes, when your dog is, is six months old, You'll bring me, you'll leave him anywhere from six to eight weeks, depending on how he does. I don't want you to come and see him or anything during that time. When I give him back to you, he will be as well trained as a dog can be trained. I'll guarantee it. If you're not totally satisfied, it won't cost you a dime. So, honky. You know, he, he keeps the pup around and on it gets about six months old. We take it to the gentleman one day and he comments on how pretty it is and it is one of the prettiest dogs you'll ever see. We bid farewell to the dog and we go on back to Honk's house and I let him out and go on home. Well, in six weeks, the man has called Honk and told him, uh, you can come get your dog. I don't think I can do any more training than I've done. He has really excelled everything that I've ever done. You have as near perfect bird dog as you could have. But I want you to come with plenty of time. I want to demonstrate what he can do for you and be sure you're satisfied before you leave. So how can I go down on set day and there he is, and oh, he's so glad to see Honk. He runs to him, unties his shoe again. Dogs are good for that sometimes. The man says, I want you to see what this dog can do. He said, it just amazes me at how well he has learned. He has a large field, and there's clumps of brush all around in the field. You know there's probably birds in those clumps of brush. We go out to the first little clump of brush there and the dog comes on point. Just perfect, I mean picture perfect point. Right at that pile of brush. And then he breaks point. And he lays down. And he rolls over four times. He gets back up and comes back on point again. Honk said, uh, what is that all about? The man says, he's telling you there's four birds in that clump of brush. Really? The man said, yes. Honk said, no way. Uh, no. Said, yes. I would bet my entire farm that there's four birds there. The man picks up a little stick and throws it over. Four birds fly out of See? Honk said, yeah, yeah, I guess. So we walk on down a little ways. And, oh, oh, once he comes on point again, another little clump of brush down there, and he's pointing. Perfect. He breaks point, he lays down, he rolls over seven times. Comes back on his feet, back into that perfect point again. Honk said, I guess. You're going to tell me there's seven birds in that clump of brush. I bet everything I own on it. Well, Honk sees a little, little small rock over there, and he picks it up and chunks it over there into the brush. Seven birds come up out of the clump of brush. Honk said, wow, maybe this is authentic. Maybe there is really something to this. So we go on out further. Here's a pretty good sized clump of brush over here. The dog comes from a perfect point. He breaks point and he starts to lay down. But he's puzzled looking and he turns in a full circle. 
There's a stick laying over on the ground. He runs over and brings that stick back up in front of us. And he shakes it very vigorously, spits it out, wheels around and comes back on point again. I said, okay, I understood the four and the seven. What's this? The man said, he's trying to tell you, in that clump of brush, there's more birds than you can shake a stick at. And that is my new pup story. Thank you.